Get out of here. Look at the front of the zombie execute. John. I can't do that. Just notice you can't do that at the start of the show. You win. Right. Try to say by SA and badges, you bastard. Right. Um, and you've just thrown me. Right. Uh, we're going to be doing command and control. And uh, you son of a bitch. This is the second episode. So this is actually uh, defending or protecting um, a Polaris. In the previous episode that we recorded earlier today, but for you guys, it won't be earlier today. Um, we actually were um, attacking, oh, sorry, using, yeah, attacking a Polaris. Now we're defending uh, the Polaris, uh, defending against a Polaris. That's correct, yeah? Yeah. Yes. X is being polite. We, mm. we just haven't changed our clothes since mm. when we recorded the last episode. We're, we're pretty, we're pretty mm. fresh. We're pretty ripe. I'm not going to lie. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, uh, no, we're defending against the fleet that we are uh, that we're sending to attack it. That's right. So yeah. All right. <laughs> you just did this. I do not remember. <laughs> no, I'm 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 gone. I'm gone. I'm I'm so gone. The, yeah. The, I still can't get over. He's just throwing me completely. <laughs> right. So let's kick it over the browser. We're gonna do essays again first. So here we go. Uh, this one. So this is essays. This is essays original fleet. And to defend a Polaris, he's going to use this. So, let me have a look. So, you got you still got Sentinels. So, it's Sentinel and Sentinel action. All right, well, you explain yourself, actually. That's probably the best way to go. So, what what, what is defending what here? Because I've obviously got some mantises and stuff like that. But you go ahead. Tell us what your thought process is. The biggest, uh, the best defense um, when defending a Polaris is the Polaris itself. So... Starting there and just recognizing that, that the amount of guns that it has, the yeah. uh, anti-ship capabilities, um, the, the hangar itself, mm. um, it has that ability to, to have that fighter to back up, to be able to swap in. And we've talked about hot bunking and swapping ships mm -hmm. in out of the hangar. There's a lot of flexibility to it. So the approach that I took was that assuming the nature of the operation being uh, like a patrol or that it's doing a hunting operation, mm. I selected ships to support that. So the first one was the Terrapin, obviously having additional mm. eyes out there to scan, look for targets. You are, you're going to have that probably be paired with the Polaris regularly. Mm. Um, the two Sentinels I selected uh, basically because they're self-sustaining and long range. So as mm. that, um, they can not only provide uh, defense and support for that Polaris, they have the ability to go out there and look and peek and use e-warfare capabilities, hopefully intercept, we don't know yet, but the ability mm -hmm. to um, uh, have a unique type of support. They can potentially disable an attacker that is approaching and then the Polaris can come in and, and, and finish them off. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, two Sentinels with EMP missiles, um, jamming, hacking, whatever it would be, potentially could disable uh, a retaliator and give that Polaris enough time to move in on target. Now, for the individual uh, ship, to sh our small fighter to Polaris defense, I selected two Hawks. And um, the reason I, I mean, obviously it's not intended for that. The reason I selected the Hawks was that ability to disable, uh, to, to potentially restrict and disable a ship. EMP? The, um, yep. Yes. Yep. So the ability to have that in a slight, nimble, extremely nimble fighter um, to be able to go into that oncoming ship. So let's say an Eclipse and disable that Eclipse, taking it out of the fight, allowing the Polaris to either get away or to take out that enemy. Mm -hmm. um, and the reason that there are two is because I, it, it probably is not possible to fit two in a single hangar, even though people get very creative with their- You can rotate you know, them stuff though. Things in, but you can, yeah, exactly. You can rotate them through. So you always have Same one on, the, de um, on defensive posture. The Terrapin as well. That's Terrapin, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, the I, I, fairly self sustaining so. I was also gonna say they are a great link up with it because this actually has, um, a brig on it so bounty hunting this actually would be a terrible ship for a bounty hunting so maybe that's what they were doing beforehand i don't know i'm making up a story as i go along here but th <laughs> there is a that i can actually see hawks being used on this i'm not joking because because of that um the brig um it would be a really good little um home base for a bounty hunting uh, group yeah uh batch is anything do you see wrong with that no I, I massive props to the to mm. them getting the hawk in a um mm. in a in a fleet i I really like them i think they're great i, mm. I my use to them up till now has been them as you know the blade runner esque yeah. landing in the middle of the street bounty hunter ship but yeah definitely a much and i reckon they they fold up so well mm. i reckon you'd get two in there without too much of a problem 
Yeah, I, I, I yeah. kind of, yeah, a little bit outside the box, and I, I think it would be really good. Um, I, I see your thought process. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like you combined a few of the other options, you know. So you, you've still got a bit of fighter. You've, it's almost well, it's kind of like a mini Antares. You know what I mean? Like you can't fit an Antares in that, but it's the closest thing you'd get to it. Yeah, in 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 a turn of phrase. So I, I can see where you're going there. Um. Sentinels, you know, they're kind of a bonus there. So they wouldn't be near the Polaris more than likely because their signature in the in the mm. way that they operate. Um, so and they can come in and help. They can go or... out and reach out and touch somebody. But the idea is the Hawks can start the fight, and the Sentinels then can get on target and finish it. Sorry, I just said the song in my head. Reach out and touch me. Yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, um, that also come in and help. Um, SA is any uh, yeah. sorry, uh, Badge, is anything else that you can see about the Sentinels? I, th I think we're starting to see that SA is obsessed with, uh, obsessed with the Sentinel, though. Um, I low key, I think the Sentinel mm. is one of the, the, the unspoken stars and clearly will get more e warfare mm. chips as e warfare develops and they flesh out what they mm. want to do with it. That, um, that... And it is absolute. Uh, Sorry, I was gonna say that, or it's the only five ships that SA is gonna own is is <laughs> all sentinels. Do you, do you own a sentinel? Yeah, yeah <laughs> just yeah, five yeah. sentinels. Yeah, just, yeah, just none of those. Just five sentinels. So, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. This one's called Monday. This one's called <laughs> Tuesday. Um, yeah. No. Yeah, absolutely. And, and and I think, um, you know, you've got everything. You've got eyes. You've got the ability to disrupt their mm. eyes. Um, you know, defend the ship with one as well. Um, yeah, I like it. Okay. All right. So for those that watched the last one, this is what uh, Badgers had. Um, he was the only one clever enough to actually try and capture the Polaris. So, uh, both Essa and myself were more um, destroying it. But I think um, now, now we've seen that. I think um, Essa and myself would very much uh, probably switch what we're doing. Hey, Essa, uh, having seen this now. Yeah. Yeah. It's a. It's a. If you're going to spend the money to actually disable Polaris, you might as well get the money from stripping it apart and selling all the pieces. Yep, exactly. All right, so, and this is what Badges has got. Well, this is uh, Slim Pickings. Probably not what you'd um, expect. Um, I'm starting I... to think I've come in too heavy. I'll just say that right now. When you see mine, <laughs> you'll be like, holy shit. But I didn't well, have I a didn't, big... I didn't really go for a fleet to defend the Polaris, I went for a fleet to sustain the Polaris. And the, the reason for that is this, is that the Polaris, for me, is something that picks and chooses its encounters. And yeah. the fact that it doesn't have an intendant fleet, it doesn't need to wait to recover, it doesn't need to wait for slower ships to manoeuvre, it, you know, it can do all of that. Everything just scatters and then reconstitutes wherever it needs to. Mm. Um, but, you know, it's got a capital scanner on it. So it will find what it wants to go after, and it just chooses what it wants to engage. Mm. Um, you know, one of the, the, you know, just if I was going to run away in this thing, I'd run it away through my opponents. Mm. And you just turn your nose towards them. Every single turret on the boat is now pointed at everything in front of it. You've got the torpedoes there, you've got the missile turrets spamming. Yeah. You it's know, really everything now suddenly part, needs to get out of the way parting the red or it's sea. on the receiving end of those torps. Yeah, mm. exactly that. Mm. And everything Good idea. becomes so focused on crap, 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 torpedoes that by the time you, the Polaris has fought its way through, everything's it's... got out the way and is reconstituting. It's mm. accelerating to quantum. It, you know, it's going to mm. well past SCM and, you know, what to, to what, what do they call it? Sub quantum or whatever it is. Yeah. Um, and I like the idea that the Mantis, the Terrapin, potentially could switch around. So you can have the Terrapin yeah. out scanning, went to locate stuff, it hands that position to the Polaris. Mm. They swap over then, the Terrapin then sits mm. with the Gemini as its Overwatch AWACS mm. early warning system. The Mantis then comes with the, the Polaris to do its quantum interdiction. Mm. And, the, you know, the Sentinel there is on either or, depending on what's going on. Um, I, I think for me, the key one is to buy everything enough time to escape. So yeah. throwing out the jamming, EMPing stuff, you know, interfering with targets so you're and systems, not, hacking if it can do that. So you're not defending it; you're essentially just getting out of there. It's it, 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 it's pick your engagements. Right, yeah, okay. Yeah, exactly that. It's mm. pick your engagements with a, mm. with a ship like that. That's I think why the Polaris is going to be so strong in the game. Mm. Is that in effect you can do this with just the Polaris? 
choose the engagements you want, avoid the engagements you don't. Mm. And the fact that everything's on one ship with possibly something from the hangar, mm. it's, it will make it incredibly versatile. Um, and obviously with this, I've got mm. the fuel for the, the snub ships that doesn't necessarily need to come from the Polaris. You've got mm. the stores on there. Um, for I don't I don't think it'll take the torps, but certainly the missiles and everything else um, for the spares. Yeah, I, mm. I think a fleet like that's going to be quite effective for quite a long time. Um, pissing your opponent off. I'm noticing that we've taken slightly different interpretations of Protector Polaris too. So when mine comes up, I'll explain it too. But SA, is there anything you see wrong with this at all? I think he's kind of well thought it out. Actually, I think it. Um, I think. So it makes... the, Go ahead. Statement statement of a craft like a Polaris, which is that that deep sea um, submarine, you know, going out there hunting, mm. uh, uh, patrolling. Um, you know, that sustainment piece is huge. And being able to keep that ship properly sustained or, or supplied mm. um, keeps it out there, keeps it, uh, as Badger said, does have capital size um, scanning abilities. Mm. Um, we're not sure where exactly that's going to end up, but it's definitely going to be able to see things from far off. Um, mm. The weakness of this is not the Polaris. The weakness of this is that sustainment. Mm. So if you are good and you can track that supply line, you're like, where is that Gemini going all the time? Mm. And you just follow it to its rendezvous, very low key, low you know, low EM signature, and you potentially that's where the weakness of the Polaris is. It's mm. not the Polaris itself or any of these ships, because mm. uh, these ships, these ships alone, can keep it out there for you know as long as you want to be out. Yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, I don't. I I can't really. This was a little hard one to critique because you are kind of critiquing the person's offense and defense and um i'm you know i keep, that's why i keep flicking back to what you've got here and I, I think you can more than defend that but you're saying it's not about defense you just like get the hell out of it i, I actually reckon you could yeah because it was a whole distortion one too wasn't it now i think about it yeah you would want to run like a bitch with all those distortion weapons <laughs> coming in. um yeah okay all right okay, all right I, I bet you there's a moment where he was like Oh my god! I gotta defend against my own trolling. This yeah, is the worst, the worst time. yeah. Shit, 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 shit. Run. Yeah, yeah absolutely. All right. All right. So this was mine, um, and this is where now I've just realized I forgot to add something to this last part. Um, my ship that I was going to have in the hangar. Um, yeah. Oh no, I do have them here. The hurricanes. Yeah. So, um. Yeah, so my thought process was I know they're coming, so I'm going to set up for it. Um, and that's why I got the Nautilus. So I was going to um, kind of like set up a bit of a minefield and sentries and then kind of sit in there with the size 7 guns and kind of shoot out and have the Polaris there with me shooting out. Same thing with the Perseus. Um, and because I had um, eclipses and stuff, that's what the Hammerhead's there for, to try and uh, take out those torpedoes and, and, and some of the smaller ships like that. But I think I might have a bit overkill. Um, yeah. That's like an org and a half to take. <laughs> <laughs> well, you said protect the Polaris. So I was trying to like capture the flag, you know, like, like I don't want it to take a hit type of thing. I like, like, like almost like there was nobody on it. It was just sitting there. I was like, what, and what do I put around it to keep it alive? Um, so what I would say about this fleet is that if the Polaris is the largest ship that your org owns, this is actually a fantastic, um, combat fleet to support mm -hmm. that. Like, so, like, I would look at this as defending the Polaris as a Polaris is not out there being that hunter killer. It's being like your main, um, you know, your main Mother force ship. in your, in your fleet. Yeah. yeah. And if that's the case, if that's what you, the approach you're taking, then yes, because you're going nose to nose. I mean, that's mm. both of your fleets, both of your fleets, the attacking and the defending, you are going nose to nose, punching each other in the face. Yeah. Like you are, there's nothing subtle about any of the crap that you select. No. <laughs> but... No, that is a great support fleet. Yeah, you have the Perseus to be able to do, you know, um, heavy armor, you know, uh, direct assault. Well, they're for the, uh, that's, have, of course, the screening. The Perseus is for the Redeemers. Um, you know, the the kind of early warning defense on the Nautilus because the sentries will start firing. You'll, you'll hear the mo mines moving or whatever, you know, see them moving on your radar and stuff like that. So, you know, they're coming. And then, as I said, the Hammerhead is for the fighters and... Um, Torpedoes for the eclipses. Well, that, that was my thought process. And then the hurricanes are just there for um, to, to swap through the. And, and I think now I think about it, if I wanted this to move faster, you could technically drop the hurricanes for defenders 
and maybe have three defenders instead of two hurricanes uh, because they've got that longer range um, where hurricanes don't have that. So, yeah. yeah no, there's nothing wrong with it. I just, it's very, very crew intense. <laughs> very, yes. Very crew intense. That's what I said. This I think not, I think I'd not a patrol. punch too high. I mean, actually, you're going to assault somebody. Well, if I knew they were coming, I'd be prepared. I'd be like, uh, Badgers, uh, bring the Perseus. Uh, you know, SA, bring your Nautilus and uh, Algred, you know, get that hammerhead over here. I need protecting, you know. Um, call in the friends. So, yeah. Um, but, yeah, as I said, I think we all took di different approaches to it. Like, mine's like, hold my ground. You aren't getting through. Yours was kind of more like, it, it, you know, SA was, uh, sorry, um, Badgers was more like survive. And yours was just fairly kind of light, to be honest. Um, yeah. And I think that's now I go back to yours. I start to think about the um, warping together aspect. So you're gonna you're gonna have trouble there because they're only ever gonna travel as fast as the terrapin or, or the the um yeah. And that that's that's why I said yeah. I'd might change mine now. Now I've thought about it a bit. I might I might go to the defender because they can warp a bit further. So yeah. All right. Um, anything you want to add to that, Badges, or have I just been totally? Sh well, I know what you can no, say when I no, say. No, it's 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 a hell of a fleet. I mean, that this is the dictionary definition of gunnery officer. Yes, sir. You see that ship over there? Yes, sir. I don't want to. Uh, understood, <laughs> sir. And we'll just delete. Um, yeah, it, it is. It is exactly what I say, sir. It's a hell of a fleet. There is no easy way into that. Yeah. But again, maybe this. You know, when people go, well, why would you take the address? Long range poke, you know, and it, it is that that rail gun on the front. Where's the interest? Is 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 the well, what I mean is in terms of what people will say. Well, what would you take the interest for when you've got these capable ships? Right. Well, that that fleet is why you would take an interest mm. because you've got that rail gun that can hit from so far out. These guys can't respond to it. Mm. So you can see all the levels of interlocking, but the, there is no one easy answer to this. Mm. That you know, you can't swarm it with fighters because you've got a lot of turrets sat there that want nothing more than to chew you apart when you come in. You're essentially, a, and I'm, you're essentially um, explaining rock paper scissors, is what mm. you're, what you're explaining. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But the, this is your this is your anti. Um, this is kind of your your anti um one solution mm. this is your anti everyone just getting an eclipse why because now your eclipses have been spotted by the the sentries so you've lost the element mm. of surprise and now the hammerhead is positioning itself closer to the threat because that's what's going to shred the eclipses as they come in yeah you know and you know now the nautilus is is you know the the polaris is getting out of there whilst you know and, and so on and so forth you bring something big in, you know, now the 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 Polaris and the Perseus are turning to engage it, whilst the Hammerhead is getting down threat and putting some space between it and the, the larger thing. You, you've got so many options within that one fleet. It's just a shame that it's half a server worth of people <sighs> to achieve it, but... Well, I um, I just that's the way I went. I, I guess I, I didn't want to just go right. Well, let's chuck a couple of redeemers there. I didn't want to do the same. I know SA did right. Not to shit on SA's here, but he just kind of went sentinel <laughs> counter with sentinel. I didn't want to go redeemer counter with redeemer. Like I was just like, but that was a bit too easy. Well, there's no, um, there's no yeah. meta in this game. That's one of no. the things. That, like, there's always meta at the moment. You know, mm. when you when you see like the, when the eclipse comes out and no one's always seven size, size nine torpedoes and. Mm. You know, it, it might be meta at this exact moment because we're still in, you know, the alpha. But once you get into actual fleets having to sustain, mm. there is no meta answer. There'll be different ways to crack every nut. Oh, and, absolutely. You know, what I liked about this episode is we saw three different ways to do it. I, my, my thought process was what do I need to disengage and get out? Mm. Like to defend immediately, disengage and, and egress. Mm. You know, Badger's approach was... Um, the Run same, like a bitch. Like, I'm going to disengage, but mm. I'm going to own the... I'm going to own the... the the battle space by staying away by being you know by keeping distance yeah. and your approach was like you know like freaking uh you know hold my ground in the face let's go yeah let's go i'm ready to rumble yeah that's what i meant by like until they stop moving yeah, yeah. That's, what, that's what i meant by everyone's taking it as a different approach as i said before so yeah all right so yeah you have a little overkill a little overkill but yeah yeah I've, and that's what i was worried about <laughs> i was like holy shit they've gone really <laughs> light and i've gone smack right um so what would you like to hear in the comments below, Badgers? Um, give me a fleet. 
that can take on all three that doesn't cost the entire server to do it. Good luck with that. So give me give me mm. something that will take on all three. Um, link it in the in the chat. Come drop it in a direct message to us. Come drop it in info runners. Whatever it is you want to do. Mm. Um, I, I don't know if we've got a command and control channel. Maybe we could put one up. Um, um, but... Yeah, we can probably do that. Or you can just directly message badges because he want, he's the one that wants it. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Fling them my way, and um, and we'll uh, we'll have yeah. a look. But uh, um, I, it, you know, I, I think exactly what we're saying, what SA was saying about there not being mm -hmm. a meta. Yes, it's rock yeah. paper scissors, but there are so many scales and ships that can do multi roles mm -hmm. that there, you know, there isn't going to be a oh god, that you just take that fleet every time and win. Mm. Um, I, I don't think that's going to exist unless you just rock up with 27 javelins, in which case that might be a bit challenging. But mm. you know. What about USA? What would you like, you'd like to hear in the comments below? Similar to Badgers, I, want to see, I would love to see your fleets. I would love to, to see you do the same thing that we've done, mm. but as cheap as possible um, in, one kit, in one event. And mm. then secondly, taking your actual orgs and friends and considering could you actually do this with the current group that you play with mm. is it possible um because i'm curious I mean, what we're doing here is we're, we're fairly low crew requirements but a polaris is not a lightly crewed ship i think it's mm -hmm. eight or ten minimum something like that yeah um even then like for me to have eight friends playing at one time is not an, a common occurrence especially being able mm -hmm. to be on one ship and support only one vessel so yeah, yeah i'd love to see what you're thinking and mm. and being cheap about it i'd love to see that too because economy of scale right the cheaper everything is that you're putting in, you know that you're using in the game that's successful the more money your enemy has to spend uh spend to to counter you mm. um i think for me i'd like to now we've done both episodes and we did it with the polaris is there is there other ships you would like us to see i know um straight away we're going to see comments about doing say a perseus or something like that but is there any anything outside the box do you think with it with an with an attack and a, de a defense so obviously it kind of limits that to to more combat ships but um yeah what, what what do you think um any ships that we could else we could do that would um you guys would find interesting and then as, as of course as these boys said um what you know if you've got your attack fleet from the previous episode you know what's your kind of defense fleet this time around i think i'd like to see those as well um other than that um uh, don't forget to like subscribe ring that notification bell and thank you to those uh who are patrons that have gone that extra mile on patreon um, with that, Badgers, where can people find you on the interweb? Nowhere, apparently, because he's muted. <laughs> God damn it. Um, sorry, the window's open because it's good weather, so there's all sorts of noise in the background that you really don't want to hear. Um, yeah, on the uh, on the YouTubes, as Drinkers with Gaming Problems, I stream uh, now every Sunday, 9 to 11. And this is when we find out he doesn't have any pants on. I've just got the worst vision right now. Anyway, all right, SA, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you can't be found anywhere on the interweb except here. Uh, he's uniquely inferior on his material. All right, with that then, he's been Badgers. He's been SA. I've been Execute, and we'll catch you in the next one. Say goodbye, boys. Goodbye, boys. You got to start with a more sexy voice. Goodbye, boys. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs>